Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Charner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And today we're going to talk about biking. Welcome, Kara Seidemann, the bike, the bike star of Cambridge. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's wonderful to have Kara here because biking has so much improved in Cambridge. I've been biking oh many many years and each year it gets better and much of that is because of your work thank you so much well, thank you thanks for biking so we're talking about biking obviously along the river i think that's my preferred spot i love being along the water and and seeing um, the water shine the people row the runners i just love it there but obviously you need to get there and you want to be able to bike in other parts of the city as well so that's what we'll be talking about safety biking, about how you get started, what are the issues. So all that Kara will tell us about. Yes. So Kara um, has been with the City of Cambridge for 25 years. She has a master in city planning and also in landscape design. She's done work in Denmark. So she really knows what the city and biking is all about. It's well, great, it's too great to have you here. Thank you very much. Well. As anybody who bikes knows, it is great. People love biking along the Charles because it's just the most wonderful way to experience the city. And yeah. so we are talking about how to make that possible for everybody who wants That's to make right. that choice. That's right. And we always start with this image because I love that blue ribbon and the green parklands. And all along the river that you see on this picture from the harbor up to the Watertown Dam and many miles above that um, is a bike pass, the Dr. Paul Dudley white bike path. He was the cardiologist of President Eisenhower and he thought biking was good for you. So this bike path obviously is a great um, chance. So Kara, take us through these images. These are wonderful pictures of biking in Cambridge. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me and thanks for anybody who's watching who's interested in the Charles River and in bicycling and that's why we're doing this is for the community. So we are really happy that we were acknowledged as a what's called a gold rated bicycle friendly community. This is by the League of American Bicyclists and that is a national bicycle advocacy organization that looks at what cities are doing around the country. Yeah, yeah. We are the highest um, rated in the um, in the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and how we got here, we're just going to go through really briefly to remind people that we're talking when we're talking about how do we improve the city for the um, for the future, we're thinking about what kind of future do we want? Um, do we want to have one that's oriented toward people or cars? Do we want something that is clean with clean, fresh air? Um, I think we do, and that's some of the impetus for why we are really uh, working on policies. Um, the health benefits of bicycling are well known. Uh, people who engage in active transportation are healthier. Um, there's lots of studies to show that, and the health community as a whole has really been promoting what we call active transportation, yeah, yeah. just like Dr. Paul Dudley White. Yeah, and of course here in Cambridge we also um, we want to make it biking safer on the roads, but on Sunday we have the advantage of Memorial Drive, yes. so if you have children um, you can take them there for their first bike ride when Memorial Drive is closed, which is a wonderful mm -hmm. introduction um, to biking. Yes. But we, your goal is to make the streets safe for biking for everyone. For everyone. Yes. Um, and our idea is that you should be able to, instead of, so we're going back to the health benefits, like we don't want to say, oh, you should be getting healthy by going indoors. Um, we sh want people to be able to bike whenever they want out and about in the streets. This is the Memorial Drive on a Sunday and it just shows the desire that the community has for engaging in this. And people, yeah. That's one of the most popular things that we do is people love um, and you know being able to just get out and just experience the freedom in a, in a, yeah. in a, in a wide area yeah. not just on the, on the path. Well so, you, you brought some interesting images yeah. of um, what happens in a city when people bike. Yes. So explain this picture to us. This yes. is a wonderful image. <laughs> yes. So this is a seminal study that was done in San Francisco in the 1970s um, about livable streets. And it looked at um, streets in a community where the kinds of housing and the kinds of people who live there were the same. And the major difference was the amount of traffic. So if you look carefully at the top 
slide which shows a little um, vignette of streets and lots and lots of lines. And what each line represents is somebody who knows somebody else. So you see lines going next door, lines crossing the street. Everybody on that street knows each other. Because it's light traffic. Because it's light traffic yes. and heavy community involvement. And whereas on the bottom, there's heavy traffic and people don't know each other. Yeah. So traffic impacts the ability of people to really know each other in the so community. A, a good community has biking and light traffic. And yes. Yes. Um, we also know that people who walk and bike actually tend to do more shopping and spend more money locally. Um, this is just a picture showing that a woman who's already bought flowers and yet she was biking along and she saw yet more flowers that she would like. Wow. So she's able to just stop and pop in yeah. and so um, you know, we know it personally, but those there are also studies that, yeah. that support that. Um, we're not going to go into this in great detail, but this is available online for people who are, want to look at our planning activities for bike facilities all over the city. We've been increasing the, the number of bike lanes, bike paths, um, and connections over the last oh, 20 years. Yeah. Now we have about 60 miles of bike facilities in the city, and we're working to do more. And we'll just yeah. talk about that briefly. At the and end. we see that obviously along the Charles is yes. a, a solid a purple line yes. around Fresh Pond and then out to Alewife. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of the major facilities. The so paths. it's the, mm -hmm. the purple ones are the paths that are off road paths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another acknowledgement that this is a biking city. This is a um, it's something that's called bike score and it's an assessment that is done for how bike friendly a community is and we have the highest score in the country. Wow, and walk score probably is also very high in Cambridge. Walk score is very high, although there are other cities that also are high on walk. So New York City, for example, is very yeah, high. But there well, are other we want to we want to maintain this and continue yeah, to yeah. make it possible. Great. Uh, we see that more and more people are bicycling. As you, um, the more that you can provide facilities, the more people are actually going to take advantage of them. So we've between 2002 and 2012, we've tripled the number of people bicycling in Cambridge. Then we've been doing studies to try to figure out what is the results of all of yeah. our work, and that's what this chart shows. Yeah, we, we were out there um, on Bike Week and greeting, wishing people a happy Bike Week, and it was just yeah. just absolutely a constant stream and happy bikers. It yes. was really wonderful. Yes, it's, it's, that Makes is people the happy. People who are biking generally have a smile on their faces. It's really wonderful, um, yeah. and it's great to see how many people are out there. And they arrive at work happy yes. because they've exercised, <laughs> that's exactly so that's right. a great yes. way. So we have the fifth highest um, percentage of com residents who commute to work by bike. And this is 9%. I think it's a, it might be a little hard to read. Yeah, it's hard to read. And the light green is walk, and then green is transit, very high. And then the, the drivers in orange. So that's a very good percentage. Mm -hmm. Is there a goal for Cambridge? Our goal is more. More, good, <laughs> let's go for it. Okay. It's not just, not just commuting, by, it's also all the other trips. Commuting is only 20% of all trips. All the other ones are you're going shopping, you're going to meet your friends at the beach. Um, not that many people are surfing here, but just to show that it's oh. for all trip purposes that we're thinking about, yeah. not just for commute trips. Yeah, I'm, I'm a SUP user, stand up <laughs> paddleboard, and I haven't yeah. just thought of, of using the bike to take it to the river, but yeah. why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this is a big message I'd like to, to convey, which is that we're really expanding our thinking about who's able to bike, because what we want to do is enable anybody who wants to bike to be able to do it. Yeah. And so we are looking at people from the ages of eight to the ages of 80. Of course, yeah. it's, you know, we're looking beyond that, but this is this is concept out there of an 880 city that anybody from the ages of eight to 80 can, can get around. That and that's good. our goal. That sounds good. So this is going, we're going to take a minute on this slide because it's a little complicated, but it's really important to understand um, that th this is from a study that's done about people's perceptions about bicycling, their comfort levels, and what they would like to do. So if you look at the little thin 1% sliver, that is what we call a group of people that are termed um, strong and fearless, people who will bike anywhere. The male spend spandex crowd. Yeah, and there's of course we, we love the people who are out there biking like that, but they are already biking, so we can make things better, but what we want to think about is the other 99% and what will help them yeah. make a choice to bike. So the red is the 9% that is called like enthused and confident, and these are the people we see now who feel like, okay, I've got bike lanes, I've got bike racks, um, there's programs in my So like you and work. me. Yes, I think that would be, yes, yeah. exactly. Me bike I and think I would it. put myself yeah. in this category, exactly. Yeah. But I feel like I'm, I need to have something to feel supported. 
we're approaching that number. So what about the majority of the population? Those are people who may very well be out on the river and loving to bike on a Sunday, but don't feel like every day that they're able to do it, or people who might bike with their kids, but they're not feeling comfortable to let their kids go bike to school. Yeah. And But they want to bike yeah. more. And then a 30% who says, no, I don't want to, but that's not actually true. That 30% actually does want to. They just feel really scared. So the 60% <laughs> feels like, okay, maybe I can see doing yeah, can it. Do it. And yeah. the people who are 30% yeah. are mostly people who just feel really scared. Yeah. So, um, oh, we, yeah. Yeah. so what, what is it that's going to give people comfort? And there's been lots and lots of studies, and we're going to be put, putting them up for people who want to read them, people who like, like reading studies, but that what gives them comfort are things like the pike paths and things like these kinds of off-road facilities. Yeah. And so we're thinking of uh, separated facilities. So this is separated from traffic, but on the road. Yeah. And we're thinking more like that. Um, and obviously a question that comes up, mm -hmm. and we've had many sad um, accidents in, in Boston, not so much in Cambridge. So people will often ask about, um, about accidents. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that um, well, that we will, I'd like you to address okay. with this image here. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a couple of things I can talk about. One is the notion that shown in this slide, which is called safety in numbers. This is one study, there are many that cite the same um, evidence, that the more people who are bicycling, the safer it is for every bicyclist or for every trip or for every mile traveled. Yeah. So on the bottom you see the bike share of workers so um, you see that New York has less than one percent they've actually increased more yeah. recently but at the time of the study and uh, Vancouver and Portland are up at four percent they've also increased a little bit higher at this point but the what they're showing is the number of fatalities um, per 10,000 cyclists yeah so you have to have a rate so the Places that have fewer percentages of people biking are less safe than the ones that have higher percentages of people bicycling. Yeah, and Cambridge would be off the chart, both to the right and to the bottom, because you have 9% biking and you've only had one fatality. In 11 years. In 11 years, that is, mm -hmm. wow, that is, and the goal is zero. The goal is zero. zero. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So this also is important just to show that um, the blue line represents the um, it's the number of cyclists that is actually calculated in millions of bicycle miles traveled. Um, and the yellow line is the number of reported crashes. So what you can see is that the number of people biking and the amount they're biking is going up quite dramatically. And the number of crashes while going up slightly has sort of plateaued and is nowhere near that rate of yeah. increase. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see that the trend is that it's safer. So the bike crashes per million bicycle miles traveled is going down. Yeah. So let's look at Cambridge here. Yeah. That might be a, a little bit hard um, yeah. to see the various, you all probably have seen people opening doors, which yes. is a, a major, a major that's, concern. That's the 20% on the lower right, purple. And um, there's also related to parking is this category that's called a uh, side swipe and that one is in the pink and then the other category is that's very high in cambridge is the light blue which is um, coming out of uh, side streets where and it's called an angle crash and you see a little diagram on the upper right so people who are coming out of a side street and the bicycles are going straight one thing i'd like to just remark on this and we're really going to be trying to make an effort to reach out more to motorists is that far and away the vast majority of crashes are caused by motorist error it's the drivers who are doing things that are wrong. They're not looking for opening the car doors or before turning. Yeah. And so anybody who drives, please look, look out. Uh, look out. And that's also the case for pedestrians. Yeah. But yeah. That's what, so. So um, we think about education, and then we also think about what we can do to yeah. make facilities better. And that's yeah. also what, because you are head of the biking program, but also of the pedestrian program. You mm -hmm. look. You look out for both yes. pe people yes. on feet yes. as well as yes. on. Yes. On, there's lots of yes on yeah. wheels absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so um, um, another um, injury this is how severe the injuries are and these are you said that by no injury these people who report an incident but nobody was injured is that what we that's right. report that's right yeah and the Cambridge police have done a fantastic job of collecting all of the data so that we 
even if there's a very minor thing, like maybe somebody got, you know, their their bike wheel got a little twisted, but they were okay, yeah. still gets reported. Good. And so um, the the upshot of this is that the number of serious crashes is very, very low. Yeah. So that means if you're out on the road and something happens to you, if you have an accident, please report it, not to necessarily to complain or to sue somebody, mm -hmm. but just to let the police know where it happens, what happened, yep. it really helps to improve the situation. Right. So then so, we can really focus on what yeah. what needs to be improved, improved. in order yeah. to make it yeah. down to zero. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm just going to briefly state that this shows um, the connection between the safety of the kinds of facilities, and if you look in the so the, on the left is the route preference. That means I don't like biking on major streets and I really like biking on bike paths. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom it says the red is it's less safe and the green is more safe. Yeah. So what this says is that major streets with on-street parking are the least safe and, um, and separated bike facilities, yeah. cycle tracks, are the most safe. Yeah. And the word cycle track is kind of an insider word. So th is. think of the along the Charles River, it's kind of a cycle track. That means there are no cars there. Well, that's actually a multi-use path. All right. So if you look, you see that um, a multi-use path is very highly um, valued, and actually separating bicyclists and pedestrians is actually even safer. Well, even better. That even would better. be that. I yes. think on the on the Charles, yes. I think that's that would be the next level yes. of goal yes, to separate the, we are the the runners and the walkers and the cyclists. Yes. And I think Memorial yes. Drive, the historic parkway initiative by DCR. Uh, which is um, is ready is um, mm -hmm. it just needs the funding from the environmental bond bill mm -hmm. has a separation for these groups in, and in, in some parts of it and that's yeah. definitely very valuable and another thing that is that um, is thinking about the intersections and improving the intersections because a lot of times paths don't think about the intersections as well yeah. as they should so we're just going to quickly some examples these. yeah yep this is a regular bike lane so you know what we're talking about this is a buffered bike lane so there's space between the um, car doors and the people tra traveling. This is a protected bike lane so that the cyclists are away from the moving traffic and away from the car doors. Um, these are just pictures that in New York and in Chicago that show those examples. We have a few in Cambridge, but they're not yeah. too many yet. Well, Here we go. Right, so this is a this is a raised cycle track. It's also a raised protected bike lane, yeah. and um, that allows for more nice plantings and more nice street furniture. And if you just go further, then that's the one that's on Vassar Street, and the next one is the one that's in construction right now on Western Avenue. And there will be some more of these kinds of things coming. Um, they do require more space than a regular bike lane, so it's less easy to implement them yeah. and, of course, more resources to construct them. But where feasible, we're going to be considering them um, in the future yeah. as well. Um, this and there's a, this is a sign that is this um, sharrow that is, yes. a, again, mm -hmm. a, new, a new creation of a yes. word yes. that not everybody might be familiar right. with, but yet many people see now on the yes. road. Yes, and it basically is, it just reminds people that bicycles are going to be there and give them a little space, and that is actually um, really helpful for everyone. Um, bike signals are things that you're going to be seeing around the city. We have a couple um, right now in Harvard Square and in Porter Square. There's going to be some more in Western Avenue, and those are to help cyclists get through then we do a lot of traffic calming. That could have a whole session on its own, but that is basically designing streets to have vehicles travel at the speed that you want them to, to. Yeah. and when it lowers speeds, then it's safer for any, everyone. Um, shared streets are a couple of opportunities where you have greater public space and everybody shares the right of way. Um, now, so that's the streets, but mm -hmm. then people say, well, okay, I bike, but where do I put my bike? I think that is ah, a, a, yes, whole, a whole yes. other issue. Yes, so anybody who is around um, Cambridge knows that there are bikes everywhere. And we're, we're working to get more and more bike parking in um, private developments. So we're putting up some cool ones out in the public buildings. These are bike corrals that are out in um, the street. And you can see they're already overflowing with bikes, being 20 bikes in the space of one car. Yeah. And um, we have, these are fix-it stations that have like air pumps and tools that people, they're about, um, there are four public ones and then the universities also have some that people can use. Yeah. 
So now I'd like you to speak a little bit about the Hubway Bikes, yes. which is a, a program I absolutely love. Yes, I have yes. my green key and I, when I need it, I just let my, get myself a bike and off I go yeah. when I need that. So this is Cambridge has how many stations? Cambridge has, we'll have 33 at the end of the spring. There's some that are, one that, that, that just, two in, that just have gone in and four more that are going in this spring. This 2014, and and the whole system has 130. We have 11,000 members in the system. Yeah. Um, so it's public transportation. It, it is a system that's owned by the communities, and we have agreements so that it's all one system. Yeah. And people can use it either on a daily basis. They can buy weekend pass. They can it's have an a daily system. pass. And, and there are 20 there are 20 um, hubway st stations within a block and a half of the river. So yes. if you ever think of oh, I'd like to go, I like to, I don't have my bike, I can't get it fixed. Yes. You can go for a hubway ride along the river, and it's a great thing to do that's I encourage everybody to do that and it has been one of the most popular programs that we've done and here you and see that the density yeah. of, of hubway yeah. st um, stops it's just an amazing system and you can have a ride like that yes and of course this is our beloved um, bike path I'm glad you mentioned dr. Paul Dudley White because he was one of the first proponents of active transportation in this country and um, where this is to talk about the Additional new kinds of paths, and this does connect to the to the to the Charles River path. This is a continuation, of course. This is in North Point, and it connects to the Harbor Walk as well. That's right. Yeah. And all these new facilities, beautiful new bridges to enable people to get around everywhere. Yeah. Um, an example of other kinds of connections that we're doing, this is in North Cambridge, to enable people to connect under the railroad. Yeah, and the, the Cambridge City Council has voted unanimously in favor of the underpasses along the Charles River on the Boston side. Yeah, anything so. that we can do to help make the ride and the walk easier and yeah. more comfortable for people. Yeah. Another great place, of course, is Danahy Park for also to take kids, I mm -hmm. imagine. It's a great place to learn yeah. to bike. Um, that's really ideal. Um, and then we have some more regional paths, the Minuteman Commuter Bikeway that goes out to Bedford and connects to um, Somerville. And then there's a new path along the Alewife Reservation that was um, opened last fall and is quite beautiful. I really, that goes uh, out to Belmont and I encourage people to go out there and explore. It's really a beautiful, beautiful area as well. Yeah, and, and then there is many tra trails have been created on all rail beds. Mm -hmm. So yep. you know mm -hmm. it's flat yes. and, and, and <laughs> it's easy. normally yes. very, very, yes, very yes, beautiful. Yes. Yeah, and we have um, started to implement better wayfinding signing so people can find their way from the Charles River to the Minuteman Bikeway and back. Um, to just make it easier for people to get around. Yeah, so if somebody thinks, oh, that's kind of a nice idea, but how do I get started? How would you, what would you recommend mm -hmm. um, somebody should do? Yes, well, we are doing a couple of different programs that anybody can participate in. We have for Cambridge residents free classes, and they're everything from learn to, to ride your bikes on the bike to just learning how to do bicycle maintenance. Yeah. And they're on our website and you can sign up and we have hundreds of people who've now participated in them. We also have community bike rides that are put on by the Cambridge Bicycle Committee. And I think you have a picture here. Yes, and these are twice a year oh, in May and the uh, end of September. And we have families and people who are just getting back on their bikes and it is wonderful community event and that really shows how many people actually are doing it just because it's fun yeah and it, it, they're escorted by the Cambridge police yeah. so it's very easy to get around. Yeah. so how is that work all happening there is a bicycle committee mm -hmm. and obviously the, the Cambridge bicycle committee um, they organize the rides that the police department is very important the traffic department the public works so it's all a, an enormous community-wide effort and yeah. the whole the whole city administration is involved in that. Yes, and I think that that is one of the, the things that really makes this work. Yeah. Everybody wants to make a more livable city. Community loves having a livable city. Um, this shows just some of the different um, uh, training, bike training yeah. programs. And, and in schools they have now cycle kits. That that's right, for fifth graders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. So there is now a plan, the, mm -hmm. the Cambridge Bicycle Network plan, mm -hmm. and you would like people to to uh, participate in that very much so we have um, a number of different ways people can give their input about how how would you like to see this city be in the future for bicycling yeah. and we have an online map that you can make comments on we have we're going to different community meetings we have an open house 
um, on June 12th coming up. And all that information is available on our website um, and all the different ways that you can participate and get involved. And this is thinking about how we can, in all ways, make the city one that you would like to see for bicycling in the future. A little, and this is the this is the website yes. where mm -hmm. you find all the information about mm -hmm. bike routes, about surveys, anything mm -hmm. you want to know about yes. bicycling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's that's wonderful. Um, so, Kara, thank you so much for um, doing that work. Thank you for sharing it with us. And if in case you just joined us, you can see this show in a little while on YouTube. It will be on the Charles River Conservancy's website, like where all the other shows about the Charles River and the parklands, about volunteering, about swimming, the skate park, all aspects of the Charles River Conservancy's work are in various television programs. But to focus on biking, biking is so important for the Conservancy because we, have, we are lucky to have this asset of the Dr. Paul Dudley Wright Path. Yes, and thank you. So this is the website of the Charles River Conservancy where you can find more information about our various programs and also about our advocacy for the underpasses, um, where we have renderings of how these underpasses could look like, how people bike on there. And, um, and then you um, want, of course, to, to take the first step um, out of your um, kind of dust off your bike and and think of where you want to go on this beautiful spring day and, and see a whole new Cambridge. Yes, definitely. It is wonderful. Yes, come out, come out and enjoy the beautiful city that we have, um, whether it's along the Charles River or one of the bike rides or up at North Point. And then you can, once you're out and about and experiencing it, then you're just going to want to do more and more. Yeah. And you'll see lots of happy faces. It is. It is quite a community um, of bikers out there. And um, it's, it's also the, one of the reasons I do it is because I hate going to a gym. So I just <laughs> biking everywhere is yeah. my way of exercising. Yes. And, um, and obviously some people like to bike fast and then they would like to shower. But you can just bike slowly and, and arrive at work happy yeah. and exercised. Yeah. So thank you very much, Kara, for very all much. you do. Thank you for what you do as well. And um, we are now. Um, Yeah, I want to find the image again of, 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 of where people can find information about your program so they can fill out your form and get information. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you.